Welcome to segment 2.9 in the Cisco CCT data center series. In this video, we're going to discuss the Cisco Nexus switch family. In this video, we are going to discuss the Cisco Nexus switch family overview, and then we're going to look at the 3000, 7000, and 9000 series Nexus switches. All right, this is going to be the, Nexo, the Nexus family overview, uh, the 1000B, which is a virtual switch, and it's largely deprecated. VMware actually removed all of the API support uh, and now there is a Nexus 9000V, but the 1000V is deprecated. The 2000 series, that's the FEXs. We already discussed those. And the 3000 series switches actually have a number of uh, specialized series within them, but they're most known for their ultra low latency line uh, that's used in high frequency trading networks. All right, so the 5000 line, which supported fiber channel, fiber channel over ethernet, uh, they're, they've been very popular, uh, used for a wide variety of things in the data center, uh, but just, Prior to recording this on May 5th, uh, 2020, a lot of the line within the, the 5000 series switches went end of life. Uh, then the 7000 series, uh, they're the larger chassis and module based systems. And then the Nexus 9Ks are pretty much rent to replace everything. Now I've heard people say that they're gonna replace everything, uh, but that's not gonna be uh, the 2000 or the 3000. I don't think the faxes are going anywhere. I don't think they're gonna come out with uh, 9,000 series switches to replace the FEXs, or you know, rename FEXs to be in the 9Ks. And the, the Nexus 3Ks have such specialized use cases, uh, I don't think they're gonna replace those either. But I think it is pretty clear that the Nexus 9Ks are gonna replace the 5,000 series and the 7,000 series. So the, the Nexus 9Ks have everything. They have the chassis-based systems, uh, they ha they're, they're the ACI switches, they have top of rack switches, Onto the Nexus 3000 series. Uh, so the main concept of the Nexus 3000 series is that of the ASIC, which is the Application Specific Integrated Circuit. Uh, so ASIC performance is integral to the performance of devices. And as a result of that, uh, Cisco has focused on building a lot of their own ASICs. However, Cisco's ASICs cost a lot more than third-party ASICs. And so for that reason, for a number of the lines in the 3000 series, they use merchant silicon, which just means ASICs made by other companies than Cisco, AKA Broadcom. And then the 3000 switch family consists of the, the 3000 series, the 3100, the 3200, 3400, 3500, and 3600. All right, so I just wanted to note that the, the naming convention is slightly different than for all these other data center products. That second digit usually denotes the generation. So if that second digit is higher, then it's also a newer product. But that's not the case with the 3000 series. Um, each one of those uh, series with the second digit means something specific. All right, so here's just a brief summary. We are gonna, in a little bit, we're gonna go out to the website and we're gonna look at the specific models, but here's just a good summary of, of what's what. So the 3000 and 3100 series, those are mostly top of rack switches. Uh, the 3200 series focuses on high density. The entire goal of that series is to cram as many high speed ports into as few rack units as possible. Uh, the 3400 series offers programmable ASICs and telemetry. The 3500 series is the ultra low latency ones that are used for high frequency trading. Uh, this is the only line of the three Ks that uses Cisco ASICs. All the other ones use merchant silicon to keep them cheaper. The 3500 series switch is for customers that aren't really caring so much about cost and it's more like just get me the absolute lowest latency possible. Um, and then the 3600 line has really, really deep buffers. We're gonna take a look at the numbers when we go to the, to the Cisco documentation. Uh, but the main use case that makes sense for the 3600 would be uh, content delivery networks that you know are are uh, delivering a bunch of video. All right, so now we're out here on Cisco's site. Now I've Google searched Cisco Nexus 3000 series, uh, and that brings us here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down and compare models. All right, so for the most part, we can just ignore the Nexus 3000 since these are pretty dated. Now, if you compare the different switches here in the 3100 series, the main thing that differentiates them is interface type. Uh, you do have some interface speed differences as well. Uh, moving on to the 3100Z. Now, this is a 100 gig switch. 
if you look down here, uh, the maximum of 100 gigabit ports. So there's 32 ports that can all go 100 gig. So I know we talked about breaking out uh, ports before. That's what this is about. So you could take the 32 ports and use breakout cables that would allow you to break them out into you know a number of more connections at the lower speeds. Okay, back to the, the, the 3100s here. So the naming conventions that we talked about before um, all pretty much apply. Uh, so you've got the second two digits are the number of downstream ports. Um, and then when there's, there's two uh, letters after it, uh, the first one's going to be the type of downstream port and then uh, the type of upstream port. So P means SFP plus, Q means QSFP, T means Ethernet. All right, on to the 3200 series. So this is the one that really focused on having a high concentration of high-speed ports. Uh, if you look at the ones with the C here, C means 100 gigs. So this is 32 ports of 100 gig, and this is 64 100 gig ports. So 64 100 gig ports in two rack units is a lot of high-speed ports. All right, now moving on to the 3400 line. So this is the line that offers the programmable ASICs and telemetry. One thing I wanted to note about this line is I know that the 3200 line is supposed to be the, the high density of uh, super high speed ports. Um, but if you look at this here, these each also have um, 128 or you know, capable of doing 128 uh, 100 gig ports and can do 32 uh, 400 gig ports, which is also a lot of high capacity in not a lot of RUs, especially this one right here. So one RU of 32 400 gigs, along with programmable ASICs and uh, telemetry capabilities. I'm, uh, I'm guessing that is not a cheap switch. That kind of makes me want to put it in CCW and find out. Okay, so then the 3500 series, uh, this is, these are the ones that are uh, pretty much designed for the high frequency trading networks uh, with the ultra low latency. All right, so switch latency, this is the key stat for, for this line. Sub uh, 250 nanoseconds. I'm not sure how that compares to other switch lines, but I know it's a very small fraction. They might not even show it for the other switches. Oh, there it is, switch latency. Okay, so this is pretty low too, uh, 450. So you can see it's about half of that. Yeah, so they probably only show it for the ones that, that have low latency. So I, I'm not sure how that compares to just like a, you know, your average Nexus, but I know that that is a very low number. Okay, so the 3600 uh, series here, this is the one that has the massive buffer space. All right, so 16 gigs of buffer space across 36 ports. That's crazy. Eight gigabytes of buffer space. Now let's just compare that to the other line's buffer space. Are they going to show the buffer space? Boom, boom. All right, not there. All right, so shared buffer space: seventy megs, 20, 20 to twenty-two megs, seventy megs. You compare that to eight and sixteen gigabits. I mean, that's massive. So yeah, like I said, the, these are the switches that I would guess really specialize for you know content delivery networks for uh, video video delivery. All right, now on to the Nexus 7000 series. So these are chassis-based systems that are used as the core in data centers and overall network cores. Uh, there's two families within the Nexus 7Ks. Uh, there is card backward compatibility, and that means that you can take the 7000 cards and put them into the 7700s, but not vice versa. Obviously you can't take the newer cards and put them in an old hardware because it's not gonna know what to do with it. Uh, they are supervisor based systems. Uh, so the supervisors are basically the, the brains of the operation there. They perform all the routing operation. Uh, redundant supervisors are pretty much always required in these just because they are 100% necessary for operation. And then there's the concept of fabric modules. Now, I'm not sure if this is the exact right phrasing for it, but it basically provides backend networking uh, for the chassis uh, for the line cards that you put in there. Um, so we're, we're gonna go see later in documentation for the 7K series, um, but in order to run certain line cards, there is a requirement of how many fabric modules you have to have in the chassis in order to get it to work. 
So it's very much a capacity concept. If you wanted to really max out your chassis um, with line cards, you're gonna need to have an adequate amount of fabric modules in there to accommodate that. All right, so I've Googled Cisco Nexus, 1000, or Nexus 7000 series switches, and here we are at the data sheet. All right, so I Googled uh, Cisco Nexus 7K. Uh, it takes us straight to here. Now, if I could draw a line down the middle, um, on the left, you're gonna see these are the older models, uh, the Nexus 7000s, and these are the 7700s here. Now, I don't know if you can see this. Notice that you can see the vents on the sides of the 7Ks. Now remember, these are older and these ones were designed for side-to-side -side airflow. I don't know if this one is so much. Uh, but you can also see that the 7700s, the newer ones, are they don't have anything on the side. That's because they're designed for front-to-back airflow. And this one here is the 7710, this, or the, the 7010. This one's just a little bit different and it has this, this thing up here. Uh, it looks like a mini fridge or something, but it's what it's for is cable management. All right, so now we're going to go do a, a view models comparison. And the first thing we're going to look at is supervisors. It kind of goes chronologically uh, from right to left here. So Nexus 7K came out first, and then it had a supervisor one. Uh, then it came out with supervisor two, which was then followed by supervisor 2E. Um, and then you can see that the, the 7700 came out, came out at about that time and started at Supervisor 2E. And then there's the Supervisor 3E that was derived from the 2E. So it's just important to note that certain supervisors go into certain chassis. All right, so now we're going to look at the, the line cards. Um, so the main distinction that I want to make here is the difference between M series and F series. So like I said before, the, the Nexus 7Ks can function as uh, normal... Um, enterprise network core as well as data center core. Uh, the M series are gonna perform more of the, I guess we can look at it like the route switch or the enterprise uh, networking core functions. Whereas the F series, the F stands for fabric and that's gonna be more of your, your data center functionality. It's gonna have more of the, the data center features. So depending on what you wanna do in the chassis uh, is gonna dictate what line cards you get. All right, so now let's talk about the naming convention on these F-series modules. The N7K is going to be for the 7000. N77 is going to be for the 7700. That part's pretty self-explanatory. So the F is going to be because it's an F-series type. Then the next digit is going to be the generation number. Then the next two digits after the generation is going to be the number of ports. So you can see right there it's 48. And the next two letters after that is going to be port speed and type. So here the X would be defining how fast it is. And then the port type would be P, which would be, again, P stands for SFP plus. And then you've got this other number here, right? So let's just focus on this one. 23, what does that mean? So what the 23 means is it's referencing the fabric modules. I know I told you before that uh, in order to run certain line cards, you need to have the fabric modules in the chassis in order to basically give it the, the backend networking support. So what this means, the first digit here is the generation of fabric module that's required. And the second number is how many it needs. So this would need three second gen fabric modules. This would need, this line card here would need six of the third gen. All right, so now we're gonna look at the chassis page here. And the main difference here, <clears throat> um, other than whether or not you're gonna go with the 7,000 or 7,700, it's gonna be the amount of space that you have for IO module slots. And the only thing that I really wanna call out here is that this number here tells you how many slots you can have. However, um, the number of supervisors takes a number out of there. So basically the supervisors require a spot, a slot. Um, and the only other thing to note is that uh, the 7702, it would be one way to refer to that, only has two slots, um, but it only can have one supervisor, which means that you could only put one module into it. So before when I said that uh, redundant supervisors is almost always required or always required, I guess I was incorrect because this one, you can only put one of them in and then you have one spot for a module slot. So the 7706, um, has four module slots because it's going to have two supervisors. So supervisor redundancy, you can see that everything has yes except for this one.
All right, so now we're going to move on to the Nexus uh, 9K series. Uh, like I said before, it's pretty much meant to take over uh, the 5K and the 7K functionality. And with that, we're just going to move right into a model comparison on Cisco's site. All right, so I've Google searched uh, Cisco Nexus 9000, and uh, it takes me right here. So you can see by the picture that they're going to have stuff in all shapes and sizes. So you've got like your one and two U units over here, and then you've got the larger chassis-based systems that are probably going to or are going to replace the Nexus 7K. Okay, so I've scrolled down a little bit here and I am going to uh, click on compare all models. Okay, so here we have the Nexus uh, 9500 chassis. We can see it's a modular chassis. Again, uh, this is going to uh, replace the 7Ks. So here's the supervisors. It's the same type of uh, supervisor and module concept that the 7Ks had. Um, also note, um, a lot of these can can be the 9500s can function as ACI spines, okay. But it's not all of them. Um, on most of these, like when you go into the specifics, it will say whether or not it can function in ACI mode. Um, let's see here. All right, so this is just going to be the supervisors. So let's compare these. These are the 100 gig modules. Uh, can they function as ACI mode? Usually it tells you. Okay, yeah, so a lot of these 9500s can function as ACI spines. So none of the 9500s, so in, let me just back up real quick. So in, in an ACI uh, spine leaf architecture, uh, the spines, I guess, you know, this is probably the wrong way to say it, but it's more of an aggregation role and the leaves are gonna be more of the access role. So the, the leaves are definitely the access role. And uh, so you couldn't use a 9500 as a leaf. So that's gonna be no on all of them. Um, and uh, you can see a couple of them here can function as ACI spines. These are going to be the line cards that go into the 9500s. These are modules. All right, 40 gig modules. All right, so you've got a difference in speed here. And then you've got some of the, the 10 gigs that can also function as ACI spines. Uh, <laughs> actually, it all says no. Is it, that, that's interesting. Because if you look right here, it says NXOS and ACI. And then when you go into here, it says yes to NXOS mode and then no to everything with regard to ACI. So that's kind of weird, but whatever. Some of the 9500s can function as ACI spines. Um, or you can, now we're gonna go down and look at the 9300s real quick. Um, so they're, they're mostly organized here by speed, but they are organized by function a little bit. Let's look at this. Yeah, so it says usage. These ones, it looks like these ones are meant to be, they, they can be both ACI spine and leaf. Um, so these ones are probably, um, like one of the main use cases for them is for ACI. And so ACI, I, I know we haven't talked about that and we're not going to because that's a, a massive configuration. It's kind of an advanced configuration uh, topic. All right, so all these ones can also function in ACI. All right, so these are 1, 10, and 25. These can also all be ACI. And these as well. So yeah, so the 9300 switches really are, are really made for ACI. And then the 9200s, uh, if you look at it, they, so what's the difference between the, the Nexus 9200s and the 9300s? What's the difference here? Well, to me, if you look in here, it, it can do pretty much everything. I mean, it's got the higher speed models. It's, it can do pretty much everything that, that the 9300s can't, except the only operating system mode is NXOS, um, which means that it can't do ACI. So to me, that's like if you if you wanted a data center switch that you knew was not going to be used for ACI, you could go with a 9200. So yeah, so it was looked like, here we go. So top of rack, top of rack, aggregation, access, access, top of rack, management switch. Okay, so those are the other functions other than being an ACI. All right, well, that brings us to the end of the long, exhausting topic of... Uh, Nexus switches. We went over the uh, Nexus family overview, and then we went through the 3000, the 7000, and the 9000 series lines. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, 
Give it a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.